I'm Paul Hogg and I'm the Dean of Science at Royal Holloway and we are, I think, very keen on fusing science and art at the university. Many people are familiar with the acronym STEM, Science, Technology, Engineering and Maths, and more people are getting interested in STEAM, which is the same thing with art stuck in the middle. So we're, we're very keen on promoting STEAM here and we are launching very shortly a new department of electronic engineering. And we're very, very pleased that we have found a new head of electronic engineering, which is David Howard, who's standing there. And David is very interesting and a perfect fit with Rob Holloway because his research interests, quite apart from being associated with electronic engineering, are in sound and music technology. So David has volunteered he was pushed a little bit to do a sort of a little, little demonstration of some of the interesting things he's doing with sound and voice from a technology point of view, which I think will fit in very well with this event. I don't really want to say any more because this is David, David's event. This, this is your bonus activity, and I'll pass you over to David. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. What I want to talk to you briefly about tonight is how your voices work, because we're in for a treat of some very fine voices. And it's interesting to me, as an engineer, to understand more about how they work. And I want you to take away two things about the human voice. We have a buzzer. What we have in the neck is a buzzer. And in effect, it's one of these. <laughs> and I could go on talking to you like this if I wanted to, but it's not very easy. This is called an electrolarynx, and it creates a buzz which is akin to what your vocal cords do when you are speaking. It's the kind of device that somebody might be given if they sadly have to have vocal cords removed due to vocal cord cancer. But what I'm interested in is what goes on above the larynx. When I move my mouth around, you can understand what I'm saying. If I put me or a singer into an MRI machine, a magnetic resonance imaging machine, I can take a picture or a set of pictures across the head, from which I can calculate the shape of the tube. From that, I can create a model of what the tube looks like. And here is a model of what my tube looks like. Now if you're at the back, you probably can't see very much. It's a right angled tube, it's in white plastic, and on that end is a pair of lips. And those are my lips, so my lips look like that, and it sits on the side of my head, and this is a one-to-one -one model of my vowel R. Now I'm an organist, and one of the things about being an organist is one is fascinated by pipes. This is a pipe. So I had this bright idea that if we could get a number of these and stick them on an appropriate instrument, we would then have the possibility of creating an instrument which, for the purposes of the demonstration, I'm going to call a vocal tract organ. And I'm going to let you hear this. And in order to make it a bit more fun, we're going to hear it in the context of it being an organ accompanying a singer. And Esme Smith, who's sitting at the front, will come and sing for you as we start a piece that you probably know. But just bear with me while I just get the level right. Okay, so it is me. 